Welcome to the Cybersecurity Roadmap. Get ready to explore cybersecurity with me. I'm here to share my journey from going to zero experience to earning over £100,000 per year. And I'm going to show you how to do the same. It all started with a business and IT degree. But if I was to start all over again, I wouldn't go down the university path. In this video, I reveal the strategies that propelled me to success and how I would do this all over again without a university degree. So make sure you stick around for a clear roadmap of how you're going to get into the cybersecurity industry and how you're going to kickstart your own career. And by the end of the video, you'll have the tools and confidence to succeed. Let's go. Hey, cyber peeps. So my name's AJ. And on this channel, we discuss all things cybersecurity and online safety. So the first step in getting your first job in cybersecurity is actually understanding the industry and understanding the cybersecurity landscape. First of all, you need to know the current state of the cybersecurity job market. So as we can see in 2023, the estimated size of the current cybersecurity workforce was at 5.5 million. And between 2022 and 2023, that workforce actually grew by 8.7%. And once you're going into the industry for the first time, you want to know its future outlook. So as we can see here, that in 2021, the cybersecurity market was valued at 197 billion in 2021. And it's actually predicted to go to 657 billion by 2030. So that shows that there's definitely going to be room for jobs and it's definitely a good time to get involved. And as you get more of an outlook on the industry, it's also important to understand how many jobs are actually unfilled. So as we can see here, Cybercrime Magazine is reporting that there's 3.5 million unfilled positions. So that's making me think that, yes, there's definitely room for more people to come in. And yes, there are a lot of people pursuing a career, but often than not, what they're being taught at the moment isn't what is needed in the industry. And the Cybercrime Magazine are actually saying that there's going to be an increase in disparity between the supply and demand through to 2025. So there's definitely positions available. They're just looking for the talent to fill them. So now that we know cybersecurity professionals are in demand, and we know that there's jobs available, what we can do now is start to build up a pathway towards that first job. But before we can pick a pathway, it's hugely important to pick a job role that you want to focus on because that's going to help you to define your pathway and it's going to increase your chances of success. So first of all, if you don't know what cybersecurity is, it actually refers to the process of keeping technology systems safe from outside forces such as hackers. The reason that companies employ cybersecurity professionals is so that they can protect their sensitive information and allow their businesses to continue to build that trust uh, with their customers and ultimately keep their data safe. And the thing is, cybersecurity isn't just one role. There's so many roles in this industry and that's why it's super important that you need to pick one and decide what pathway you want to go down before you start trying to do certifications, courses, or even doing a degree if that's what you wanted to do. So examples of different roles are things such as a threat hunter, red teamer, so this is more like pen testing, digital forensics analyst, so this is where you'll be going through a hard drive, look reviewing evidence, for example. There's a lot of these in uh, the police forces and things like that. Purple teamer, so this usually combines a red teamer who are the attackers and the blue teamer who are the defenders. Malware analysts, so you'll be reviewing malware, reviewing malicious code, understanding what it does. Chief information security officer, so it's unlikely that you'll be able to pursue this path um, straight away and um, this is more usually executive leadership role that you have to work up to uh, but this is another very common role in the industry so a blue teamer so this is usually a cyber security analyst or cyber defense analyst and this is actually the role that i started with and is often the role that i recommend many people when they're starting out to go down security architect so this is developing and implementing creating secure networks uh, incident responder so that's currently what i do at the moment so i'm an incident response consultant uh, so that's effectively uh, working for a company. If a cybersecurity attack happens, then you work with them to create a plan to figure out what happened and then also remediate it. So cybersecurity analyst, again, another common role, like I mentioned, or cybersecurity engineer. So this is where you could be building the tools and things that the cybersecurity analyst will be using, things such as a SIEM, endpoint detection. You're working as an engineer to build those tools uh, to allow the analyst to do their job. These are very similar to blue team engineers, open source intelligence investigator or analyst. So this is using open source tools and resources on the internet. You're collecting relevant data for an investigation that could be going on. So this could be where they're researching IP addresses, domains, uh, people, financial institutions, all that kind of thing. It's often called threat intelligence analyst as well. Cloud security analyst, that's a very popular role these days, which uh, we often recommend people going down or specializing in after they've become a cybersecurity analyst. So again, SOC analyst comes up a lot, and this is the pathway that I'll be focusing on in this video. Like you can see, there's many, many jobs in the cybersecurity industry 
And what you need to be doing, you need to be coming to articles like this, understanding which job role you think is for you, and then that'll be able to help you define that specific pathway and it'll increase your chances of getting that first job in the industry. So now you understand the state of the cybersecurity industry, it's clear that there's jobs out there. You've gone through, you've picked a role that you think you're going to enjoy, now you can start building that pathway and this is what I'm going to show you next. So in step two for the example of this video, I'm going to be picking the pathway of a cybersecurity SOC analyst, blue team analyst, because personally that's the pathway I went down and that's how it got me in the industry and that's how I'm still here after eight years. So step two is building those foundations. So this is something that we call the cybersecurity trifecta. There's only three ways that you're going to be able to get into cybersecurity. So there's path one, which is university, which is through the degree. That's obviously the more expensive route takes longer there's a certification route which ultimately can get you there quicker but can also be quite expensive and then there's also the home project routes which you can do a lot of home projects for free which can also get you there as well but like i said i had a business and it degree i'd never got a cyber security degree and due to it costing so much these days and that you don't always get the right skills to get you into the industry I don't think we're going to explore the university route for this video. The best way that I see to get into cybersecurity these days is through a mixture of certifications and home projects. So let me show you how that will work. So now this is a pathway for somebody who doesn't have any experience in IT or any experience in networking. If you have experience in IT and networking, then you can modify this to how you want to. So first up, you're going to need your IT foundation. So something like the CompTIA A+, could really help out with that. To be honest, I don't think you need to actually do the CompTIA, pass the exam or get the certification. You can learn the IT foundations on YouTube uh, with somebody like Professor Messer who goes through the whole certification. So now that you've done that, you're going to want to get your networking fundamentals and so with something again, Professor Messer, CompTIA Network Plus. In this case though, I probably would recommend passing the exam and even if you wanted to spend a little bit more money, actually get the CompTIA labs so you can do the hands-on practical labs to kind of build that practical experience. Then once you've got those foundations, you're going to want to be going for and setting up your CV for IT help desk role. And you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, this isn't cybersecurity, this isn't what I signed up for. Well, when you're starting out, it can often help to get that underlying networking experience, understand how computers actually communicate with each other in an IT help desk role, it helps you understand how to work within an IT-based company, and it's a good first step, and that's actually where I started, and I was in a networking-style role. Then, once you've built up this experience, you want to be looking at cybersecurity analyst jobs like we mentioned. It could be cyber analyst, SOC analyst, they're all very similar roles. And once you understand what jobs you're looking for, you want to build those cybersecurity fundamentals while you're working as an IT help desk analyst and you can build those fundamentals with a CompTIA security plus and you could be doing home projects like security onion which is a home network monitoring device so once you've set up at home it can monitor your network and the tools that are in security onion itself is completely free are the tools the cyber security analysts use on a daily basis so it's great experience then you can get some cloud-based experience just to kind of build up that um, some of the more modern skills that are expected from a SOC analyst so you can use an AWS free tier account. So that free tier account will allow you to set up your own AWS infrastructure. And then you can also pursue the AWS Certified Professional Certificate. So that's $100. It'll give you insights into how AWS works. They've also got free training on their website as well, which I'll show you. Then once you've got this experience, you'll be able to format your CV for a SOC analyst role. And then you can get that first job as a SOC analyst. And once you've got that then, that's when you can start to specialize into maybe if you wanted to go down management path as a CISO, or if you want to go down cloud computing path, or maybe a malware analyst path, that's where you can then specialize once you've got your foot in the door. So this is personally the pathway I went down myself. I didn't actually do the CompTIA certifications because like I said at the start, I had a business and IT degree, so I had those foundations in IT and in networking, but I did go into an IT help desk and networking style role before my first cybersecurity analyst role. Now you're probably thinking, can I just jump straight into the cybersecurity SOC analyst role? Well, you can, yes. If you're that way inclined and you think you can learn all the foundations without going into IT help desk, then anything is possible. But this is just what I think is the more realistic pathway to make sure that you've got those foundations before you try and move into a cybersecurity role. So these home projects then move me into step three, which is increasing that practical experience that you've got. Just so you know what this all looks like, when I say the CompTIA, certifications and I mentioned Professor Messer you can come into uh, YouTube and you can search up CompTIA Professor Messer 
and this is him here. He goes through all of the different certifications. And he goes all through the presentations and it's actually the authorized content from CompTIA themselves. He could even show you how to pass the exams if you wanted to pursue the exams. And you can do this for A+, Network+, and Security+. And like I mentioned, you probably don't need to pass the A plus exam, but I probably would recommend trying to get the Network Plus and the Security Plus under your certification just to bolster your CV or your resume so that it's more likely to get picked up by recruiters. And then when I mentioned the cybersecurity projects that you can do once you've got into that help desk role, then Security Onion is this year. And it's as simple as going to securityonionsolutions.com. You can download the Security Onion tool and you can follow their documentation to learn how to install it. And uh, like it shows here, so these are the kind of things that cybersecurity analysts will be seeing on a daily basis. This is the kind of alerts that will be coming into the SEAM, which is a security incident event management tool. They'll be hunting, they'll be looking through PCAPs. All of these things you probably don't understand at the moment, but it'll really help you build those fundamentals, even things like casework. This is a lot of what is missed when it comes into cybersecurity that there often is a lot of documentation that you need to get good at dashboards within the seam all of this gives you good experience and it's completely free to set up and of course you have everything on youtube these days so you can watch here the installation part one and part two this will really help you set it up and get comfortable with using security on you so this is the beginner aws certified cloud practitioner cert that i mentioned so this is like i said is a hundred dollars but it'll prepare you for uh, the fundamentals of AWS itself and you'll get a good understanding of how AWS works and if you don't want to pay for the certification you just want to stay in the free route I do recommend doing it it's rather cheap and again like the CompTIA certifications it'll then be on your CV or your resume and you can even come in here then click on AWS Cloud Practitioner Essentials it'll take you to the AWS Skill Builder you can create a course on the skill on the AWS training and certification website. And you can do this course for absolutely free and it'll teach you everything to pass that certification. And a great resource for this is something called Let's Defend. And like we said, we wanna focus on our pathway, which in this case is the cybersecurity SOC analyst or cyber defense analyst. They've got some really good labs on Let's Defend to allow you to practice the skills required to be a cybersecurity analyst. And then if you wanna get into more of the mindset of a penetration tester and red teamer, which is needed for a cybersecurity analyst role, you can do practical challenges such as try hack me or hack the box. So step four then is actually networking and trying to engage with people in the cybersecurity industry. And to be able to do that easily, we've actually got this free platform on school.com which allows you to come in here, chat to us, uh, but also chat to other people that are looking to do the same thing. So we've got different forums, general discussion, you can introduce yourself. We've also got some free courses on here as well. So you can, it'll teach you how to use the platform, teach you how to create that analyst pathway. There's even a skills matrix, so it'll help you understand what skills are needed to get into the industry. And there's even a sheet in there as well, where you can tick off once you've learned a skill. We've even got a calendar in here as well where we do the monthly Q&As. So you can jump on here if you've got any questions. This is all free and this will help you network then, not only with us, but other people who are looking to do the same thing. And if this is something that you're interested in, just check the link in the description and it'll take you straight to this page and you'll be able to join our free school community. So step five then is actually trying to land your first job in the industry. You've done your networking, you've built up your skills, you understand your pathway, but how do you get that first job? So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, the best thing you can do, create a LinkedIn account. Make sure that you've actively set it so that you're looking for jobs. Make sure you've turned the setting on so people know that you're looking for work. Then you can simply come into their search tool, search by location, cybersecurity analyst, SOC analyst, cyber defense analyst, look for these different type of roles. And as you go through, you'll be able to find the different roles, the different job descriptions. So this will give you an idea of what you have learned. So you can go through these job descriptions and understand the things that you have learned or the things that you maybe you need to work on. Then once you've picked a job that you like and you think that you're ready to apply, you're obviously gonna need a really good CV or resume. So one of the best ways to do that then is to actually use ChatGPT. So you can come into ChatGPT, you can say, use it, the following job description, create a compelling resume, which is tailored to the description I'm gonna provide below. So then we can use this prompt then, using the current CV information which we'll provide below, please tailor this to a cybersecurity analyst position using the skills-based CV format. Please have the contact information at the top of the page, followed by a detailed and inside profile summary. Then have each skill as a heading, communication, technology, organizational teamwork, and customer awareness. Under each skill, make sure to have at least five detailed bullet points to explain how this person achieved this and evidenced it based on their experience. 
then have their education and employment history uh, followed by references available on request and then please tailor it towards this job description. So what you want to be doing in here is adding in your resume and CV information so you can tailor it further. And as you can see here then, so this is the format of CV or resume that has worked, has worked the best for me in the past. It's a skills-based format CV. And this format often helps with people who don't have the professional experience in a specific industry, but you do have the skills from things such as the home projects and the certifications that we previously talked about. You're going to need to come in here as well and tailor it more towards what you've done you want to make sure that it's tailored towards the job description but also your past experience also with the power of chat gpt these days then you can also ask it to provide a list of technical and behavioral interview questions uh, based on the job description that you're applying for so technical interview questions you're often going to get into the various stages of an interview so you've got to be prepared for those so you're going to have to explain maybe certain technologies such as seam anything to do with the job description they're likely going to ask you technical questions about the lost questions about how you've dealt in a specific situation. So maybe how you would respond to a security incident or maybe how you've worked as part of a team before. All of this is hugely important to prepare yourself for the cybersecurity interviews. So mm. honestly, nobody likes interviews, but the best thing you can do is just apply, apply, apply. When I was first starting out, I applied for hundreds and hundreds of cybersecurity analyst jobs and I failed many, many interviews along the way. But when you finally get that one job and you get your foot through the door, that's when you can start building up that experience to those more higher paying roles. So now to conclude this video, you understand the cybersecurity landscape, you understand how to build those foundations, you understand how to gain the practical skills required to get into cybersecurity, you understand how to network and engage with like-minded individuals looking to do the same thing as you, and now you have an idea how to actually look for the cybersecurity jobs and push towards landing that first role with an excellent CV and a preparation for interviews. So the only thing I can tell you to do now is take action. All of this listening to this video means nothing unless you take action and actually push towards getting that first job in cybersecurity and using the steps that we've explained here. So cybersecurity isn't just a job, it isn't just a skill, it's actually a mindset. So thank you for watching this video. Now if you want to learn how to protect your iPhone from cybersecurity threats, click on this thumbnail here.